Hello, scumbags, and welcome to another episode of Rebel Scum Podcast. It's the Star Wars show with me, James, and you, Brock, and you listening at home oh. or in your car or at your office desk somewhere. You're the third person in this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> They're talking to us right now. We can't hear them because <laughs> we're not telepathic, unless you are. Mm, no. Okay, well, that makes two of us. I got, I, there's medication for that. <laughs> Brock, what's this show all about? It's a show about Star Wars and all the things we love about it and the new things they're making and the old things they're erasing. Like puppets that like, are now CG. Yes, correct. I miss puppets. Uh, I do to a certain extent, except for in The Phantom Menace, it looks better as CG. Oh, God. So I can't <laughs> complain about that. Uh, but technology grows, Star Wars grows, we grow. And you know what else grows? Your love for me? My love for you. Aww. And, uh, <laughs> Kylo Ren's wardrobe. We have talked about this a few times on the show. <laughs> How is he going to wear a mask? Is he not going to wear a mask? I think it's. Uh, I think he's guaranteed to be wearing a mask, even though I think it would be cool without a mask. Yeah. Um, but th- there is a rumor that just dropped on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week where they're saying he will be wearing uh, Vader's or a replica of Vader's uh, cape, uh, Sans. Uh, chain around his neck so just mm. like the the more traditional vader cape not a whole footed cloak like he was wearing right in, right right in uh in the force awakens what do you think about that well okay if you take the chain away <laughs> how do we know it's vader's cloak unless they which i feel like they won't take the time they're like this is vader's cloak and second of all they burned that guy they did, and his his cape was on the bottom. Yeah, I'm the pretty sure it would go up first. Yeah, and I mean the helmet's so destroyed. How would the cape not be destroyed? So I, I'm thinking it might be a replica. Like he has a replica of Vader. Yeah, yeah. And like I, yeah, I agree. I don't think it'll be. It will be mentioned either. I think it's going to be more. He has it, and we're just going to assume that he wants to look. Yeah, like, like it. it's an actual like prop from the movie. I mean, there's also a chance that maybe he's transforming more and more into vader yeah as, yeah. It, as it goes on maybe it is a new look mask maybe the mask is a little more stylized toward darth vader's yeah but i uh, see we were talking about a couple weeks ago or last week or sometime a year ago whatever where we could have a new mask but then we said because disney would want to sell more toys yeah but my feeling now is they might want to sell more toys but you also want people to know who he is and not be confused by him or by his appearance yeah yeah and he's he's a brand when that i i bought the uh the star wars trivia game mm-hmm. uh, a few weeks ago mm-hmm. that came out probably around the same time force awakens and kylo ren is prominent on that on yeah. the side of it i think it's vader on the front but it's definitely from an older generation of star wars because mm-hmm. it, the Force Awakens is not even in that trivia box. Yeah. It has nothing to do with Force Awakens, but Kylo Ren is on the box. <laughs> the Kylo, and in the Star Wars Monopoly, Kylo Ren is right on the box. Like it's his mask. It's his mask. Yeah, it's yeah, his ma- yeah. So his mask is now the new face of Star Wars, and that's what I think Disney wants people to gravitate to. Right, right, right. So why change that? Yeah, I don't think they would, because like, it's like, we hope to find out who the Knights of Ren are, and they're all wearing masks, so it just seems silly to just eliminate it, you know? Uh, side Akbar. So if you go on Wikipedia mm. and you you type in uh, the Knights of Ren, mm-hmm. there's some what's it called production art. Oh, what really? Of the Knights of, that's like four of them. They look pretty. You should check that out. Oh, Wikipedia, uh, cons- not Wikipedia, cons- Wiki, not Wiki- Wiki- Wikilinks, Wikipedia, not Bulbapedia, which is about Pokemon. <laughs> is that real? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but this, yeah. So if you go, there, you can check out some concept art of the Knights of Ren. There's like oh, man. three or four of them only. Like they're not over the top. There's not a lot. Because I don't think they want you to know exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty awesome. That's I'll sweet. I saw it. Uh, I was doing some research. Some research, <laughs> some research for a YouTube video that you're going to be voicing soon. Oh, sweet. Um, on the Knights of Ren. Nice. So it was pretty awesome. You nice. know what else is going to be pretty awesome? What? Rogue Uno. Oh my God! No way! Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming up soon. <laughs> Tickets apparently going on sale November seventh. Uh, Which is barely a week away. It's like the day before the American election. Oh, well. So, you know, Americans, buy your tickets now because who knows how that's yeah, going to end up. You're going to want to buy them today. Yeah. Uh, so November 7th, apparently. But there's been a lot of talk uh, with Gareth Edwards and with the cinematographer mm. of Rogue One that it's going to be a much, much darker uh, movie. And I believe mm. the cinematographer said that it keeps in tune with Star Wars as we know it, but Gareth Edwards definitely put his stamp on it. What do you think he means by that? I feel like as I read this as well, 
I feel I like it. I like it a lot because it's it's really messing with all the people on the internet. I feel like he's he's purposely stabbing at the fanboys with the series uh, series with the theories. It's sort of like you have no idea what this movie's gonna be about, so stop it. <laughs> But yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, I'm sure pe- directors do this for every movie, but I I liked I like that. It gets me more excited about the movie because it's sort of like it's like no. I I don't think there's a lot of theories for Rogue One right now. It's more what's yeah, Episode Eight. But that's the weird thing about Rogue One is there's not. A, I think because we know the story, we're not like oh, what's gonna happen. We already know what's gonna happen. We're that's uh, weird. Yeah, but, like, we really don't know. We get a nice sense of what the movie's going to be like, but, like, I don't... I know there's a lot of people throwing around ideas, like, but at the same time, I'm like, I have no idea what this movie's going to be. It could be a success. I know in talking with uh, yourself and, like, Rob and Andrew when they're on, we all kind of think it's a suicide mission. Or, like, you guys. I never thought that. I just think because I mean, they... They never show up anywhere, and I think... True. I mean, and in order for the plans to be such... To have so much impact on Leia mm-hmm. bringing them to R2 and it being such a big deal, that I think, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them have to... Yeah, decide. I think so. I think it's a very dangerous mission they're about to go on. But. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. For, I want to... I think uh, I think the person in the most amount of danger, aside from who we all know dies now, is uh, Krennic. <laughs> I think Krennic's going to fight the... Oh, okay, like yeah, the, yeah. the saber, the lightsaber, if you will. Yeah. I think he's going to die at the hands of Vader. Here's the thought I had on Rogue One. Now, um, oh, God, what's his name? By the way, Vader's going to force choke Krennic, not lightsaber, force choke Krennic. Oh, just, yeah. so you can feel it. That's going to be that's gonna be Krennic's last scene and Vader's last scene. How do you know that? Is that legit or are you just making I'm it up? making this up right now. Oh, okay, sweet. <laughs> Uh, Forrest Whitaker, who plays Saw Guerrero, which was very exciting when they announced that because that's a character from Clone Wars. I was thinking about this week. I don't care. Like, I don't care that it's Saw Guerrero. No. And I, mean, I don't it's think it's supposed to. <laughs> it's fun and all, but like, I almost don't care. I don't know. <sighs> I, so, yeah, I, I just feel like. The excitement needs to go away. Not that I don't know if there is a lot. Know, maybe I'm just crazy. I think, I just between, about like, uh, I think in the in the Star Wars uh, fandom, yeah. there's excitement where there doesn't need to be excitement. And I say it all the time where you, the movies are separate from everything. Yeah. And and it was just, I think, a matter of the writers, yeah. Gary Witt or whoever it was at the time, said, we need an older uh, rebellion yeah. character yeah. who's like this, this, and this. And and the story group Pablo Hidalgo and all of them just said, "Hey, we have this guy Saw Guerrero. Yeah, we have him. Don't make up a new guy. Throw him in. Yeah, the hardcore fans will love it. Yeah, do whatever you want with him. He's bra- like he's going to be a brand new character yeah. in this. He's not going to be taking any baggage with him from the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. That's what I. That's what I think. I, like people are like, is he going to mention Ahsoka? Is he going to mention Anakin? Yeah, I don't think so. It'd be cool, I guess. I don't know. It'd but I think cool, that's my point. I'm but like, your parents won't know what he's talking about. Yeah, like, I think Saw Guerrero is just going to be, like, Forrest Whitaker is just going to be a cool character. Like, Oh, he, well, I mean, he's half, he looks, he's supposed to be more like Vader. Like, he's he's beat down, he's half yeah, robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs that apparatus to breathe. Yeah. And like I said, I think that part in the trailer where he says, For the Rebellion! For the win. I think he's being, he's being uh, facetious when he says that. I think he's, yeah. I, I don't think, I think we're going to find out in context. Yeah. that they're like we're gonna save and he goes oh you think you're gonna save it I've mm-hmm. seen things and, I think yeah, it's gonna... yeah. and he goes oh you wanna save save this save. and then they're gonna yeah. you know so I don't think he's gonna be on their side but he's gonna do a lot of teaching and I really don't think his role will be very big I feel like I have to rewatch Clone Wars before this movie comes up uh, and that makes me feel tired <laughs> or read Catalyst the book the oh book that's what you should read because apparently that's going to uh, deal a lot with uh, Gail and Urso, Jyn Urso's okay, father, yeah, yeah. and Krennic in that book. You're yeah. going to learn a lot of their backstory. Oh, I'm really yeah. excited for that one. When does I that think, come out? Soon. I guess in a couple weeks. No, yeah. I think by by American Thanksgiving for sure. American Thanksgiving. American Thanksgiving. Um, but I, I, yeah, that one I really want to read. I have not read Ahsoka. You haven't read Ahsoka. No, I want to read that one. Andrew Fantasia has read Ahsoka it, and the... Um, his review is on the YouTube channel now. The YouTubes. You can check that out. E- Spoiler alert, he says it's okay. <laughs> he says it's okay. And apparently the crystal part is like glossed over. Oh, really? <laughs> I love how people find these things like, look at this. And apparently it's like barely mentioned. And he, yeah. he prefers that because he doesn't really like that theory too much. Mm. And it's and yeah, people are, people are cray cray. Cray cray. 
Uh, also, with Rogue One, uh, Gareth Edwards says it's not the movie you think it is. Yeah. I wonder what he means by that. It's not the movie you think it is. These yeah. aren't the droids you're looking for. <gasps> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, it, I mean, he could just, it's just going to be all garbage anyways. He could just be like, screw you guys. It's not, you. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I, uh, yeah. That's, a, I, basically, just my first point. I'm like, yeah. We don't know what's going to happen in this movie. And you know what's cool? Remember uh, Force Awakens, the first yeah. trailer? And then, like, the trailer, the teaser, and all that stuff, the three of them that they showed was all from the first, like, 25 minutes of the yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. I I don't think they did that with Rogue One. No, but no, no. that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because I loved when you go in and you're like, oh, this part, oh, everything I know that happens has happened. Yeah. Now everything's off the table. You could do it <laughs> like now. I don't know where you're going with this, so things can happen at any point, and that's when danger occurs too. Because you know when you watch a movie and something happens in the trailer, you're like, well, they're fine. Because yeah. the part of the trailer still has to come up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I get what you're saying. No, I think. I think Star Wars or Disney or Lucasfilms or who I, whatever you want to call them, the people who do this, they know what they're doing. Like they, maybe it won't, like again, we always say is like, oh, there could be a chance that some, one of these movies is awful. <laughs> but I think the, the they keep things tight lipped and they know how to market it properly. And I, it's uh, how long is the movie's like two hours and seventeen minutes? I think is oh, yeah? the running time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a good length. Which I also think. They have confidence in it if it's going to be that long. That's what yeah, I think. Yeah. I think it's... A, I, I have... I have uh, there are things that alarm me with it mm. that I'm like, I'm not sure about that. I don't want to talk about And there are things that really pump me up for it. And I think right. I think this could potentially be the Star Wars movie that is the most exciting. Because if it's the beginning and an end and there's no after this and there's no before this except for the, the book catalyst. <laughs> but if this is like... If this is the only movie in this universe and this is the only time we're going to get Jyn or so... K2SO or K2SO or whatever they're calling them, <laughs> uh, Cassian, you know, yeah. all those guys, yeah. it could be awesome right. because you're not bogged down with, well, next time we're going to do this or next time we're going to do that <laughs> or we're going to tie it into this. We're going to tie it. It's like, nope, this is your standalone story. This is it. Yeah. The end. That would be great. I'm, movies are missing that nowadays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With Marvel's like, everyone does the Marvel thing. Everything's got to connect and mm. I get tired. Yeah. <laughs> I get tired. Like when I watch a movie, I'm like, ah, I'm tired. Yeah. Stop. I just wanna, I wanna see you do what you do. Don't keep going on. Keep doing that crazy thing. Uh, but uh, the DP of Han Solo, this is not in your notes. I'm just bringing this up. Mm. Also said the same thing about the Han Solo movie. How it's very different yeah. from the other Star Wars things. Weird. I think they should, cause like I feel like the saga has to have its same kind of formula. This will be the first movie. I guess you could say, outside of Ewok's Caravan of Courage, where they just do what, like, they can do whatever they want. And Han Solo can be whatever they want. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think, it, I don't think Han Solo or Rogue One have to be some epic thing. They can, but, like, I feel like the whole fate, you know, the duel of the fate, if you will, <laughs> duel of the fates, can be held to... The, the saga, where it's like, this happens, and this happens, and this is crazy, and this changes everything. I mean, Rogue One, obviously, this it's important because they get the plans to the Death Star, but I don't think Han Solo has to do anything crazy. He just has to go on a, on a, a hijinks tri- trip of some sort. I think I'd like it better if it was just a fun movie. Like, yeah. I mean, Lawrence Kasdan's running with his son, and Lawrence Kasdan did Empire, Jedi, and... Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. If Han Solo was like a Raiders of the Lost Ark, I mean, yeah, like yeah. that would be amazing. That's all you need from it. What if, what if Han Solo, he's like starting out and he's not as cocky as he is in all the other movies. Oh. Maybe he's like, he's fumbling. Not, I don't think he's an oaf. I think there's always going to be that suaveness about him. What if he keeps getting outdone by Lando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then he finally gets him and then he, he, and he gets the Falcon. Like, like, like Lando's like his his foil. Like, he keeps outdoing him. Yeah, because, like, I mean, I think, I don't know, like, Han Solo is known against uh, across the galaxy, but I think maybe the Millennium Falcon is more famous, yeah. but, like, he has clout in the galaxy. Maybe when he starts, he's nothing. Yeah, that'd be fun to see, actually. The, the only thing with that that I have to ask you would, do you think that would 
people going in to see this movie with a new actor playing on solo, do you think that would turn them off a bit? They'd be like, that's not my Han. And the thing is, it wouldn't be their Han. He would grow into their Han. But movie movie audiences are tricky. Star Wars fans are Star Wars fans. Yeah. Movie audiences are a different thing. I think both of them, to appease them both. Yeah. That's the, that's the tricky part. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, it just... Force Awakens was a good movie. Yep. Oh, no. Rogue One's not... Doesn't have to feel like uh, Rogue One and Han Solo, like, they're made by the same people. Well, not the same people, but, like, you know what I mean. Like, I don't think you just automatically, oh, hey, you want to be a Star Wars director? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no. Like, uh, I think we have this in the news, but even... Uh, Elden Aldrich, Aldrich, Elden Ald- Aldrin, who's gonna play Han Solo? It's like, and I'm, I'm sure this is with every per, every actor that has to audition for something. He he auditioned like seven times for his oh, yeah. role. Oh yeah, and it Apparently, was like uh, Spielberg found him. Nice, and it's like that's pretty great. I don't know, is that typical, or is that pretty unique for a big movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Unless unless the, the actor is attached right off the bat. I'll bet you Donald Glover auditioned a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or probably four. Yeah. But he, because the thing is, especially a character like Han Solo, you have to make sure you get the actor mm-hmm. that can play Han Solo yeah. and the audience will accept as Han Solo mm-hmm. and enjoy mm-hmm. his performance as Han Solo. Because you could come out and you could be the best Han Solo I've ever seen on film. Yeah. But if, if I don't believe you as Han Solo. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, I don't want to see past this guy playing my Han Solo. Yeah, exactly. So this guy has to have some sort of amount of charm. Yeah. And apparently he's in that uh, Coen Brother movie, Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar, which I would love to see. I have not seen that. But apparently he's the only good part of that movie. Yeah. And he has a lot of charm and charisma in that movie. Yeah. He wears a cowboy hat. So that tells us something. But apparently he's fantastic. Fantastic. Sweet. Uh, So... We have a trivia challenge coming up. Trivia challenge. We have no idea when. <laughs> no idea when. We're going to figure that out. Though. Oh, you mean the actual one? Yes. The actual yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we will do that, yeah. <laughs> We're going to do that. That will be on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, that video's gotten over 100 views. Nice. So, I mean, somebody wants to see this, apparently. Uh, <laughs> it will not be me. <laughs> actually, actually, no, it, it most Sweet. will be me. Uh, so let's call Rob up. Yeah, let's call Rob. Let's uh, jump on the hello he, phone. Uh, me just, I'll give yeah. Rob a call. We'll ask him. He knows we're calling him, so he's by his phone, but he doesn't know uh, any of the questions that are coming up because yeah. we like to make him suffer. Hopefully, we can hear him this time. Manuel. Oh, 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 by the way, if you are on uh, on YouTube, check out Manuel or uh, Andres Garcia's <laughs> uh, new fatty fan theory. It's up there on midi chlorians and how they. Are Hello, scumbag. Oh, oh, scumbags. Rob, Rob <laughs> McDonald is here. Can you hear us, Rob? I sure can, Jess. Oh, you're coming in loud. And you're clear very loud. Side. You're a lot louder than last time. I'll tell you that. Good, good. I think well, it sounded like whispering before, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Rob, I wanted to. Uh, I want to actually bring this up before we get into why we actually called you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, uh, you are, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're working on a YouTube story for us. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. In the early stages of uh, working on a YouTube story. That's correct. Uh, do you want to give us some insight into what it's on? Well, uh, let's just say, uh, you know, Rebels took a, a week off uh, last week, but uh the this week's uh, episode is kind of taking a visit to a certain planet that oh. uh, you may find out some more information about. Are Dugs from this planet? Dugs? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hopefully we'll have that up in a week's time. Uh, but for now, you uh, challenged Andrew Fantasia to a vote of no confidence a few weeks mm-hmm. ago, like a month ago now. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. We're waiting on getting you two in a room together to do the trivia challenge face off against each other i think you have a very good shot of winning i think you have an equally good shot of losing but well yeah judging by the last uh little (laughs) trivia uh contest that we did uh my chances don't look too great but uh, i like my chances certainly that's good so we're gonna uh, (laughs) we're gonna ask you a couple questions now we pulled them out of the star wars trivia box yeah that was made by who made this somebody made this i don't even know disney uh Cardinal made it. Cardinal. 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 Uh, go to Star Wars. Good people at Cardinal. Go to StarWars.com and buy it. 
Yeah, Cardinal Official. It, this trivia box is actually kind of interesting. It's not very expensive, but it's interesting because some questions are extremely easy, and some yeah. of them ask you the height of of uh, like how how tall is Sabalba? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, why? <laughs> why? Why? So we're gonna ask you a few questions, Brock. Do you want to ask Rob uh, the first question? All right, this one's kind of easy, um, but I'll. You know, this started off easy, Rob. Uh, what did Jabba the... No, it's not really easy, but I think you could figure your way through this. What did Jabba the Hutt receive as a birthday gift from Bib Fortuna? Bib Fortuna. His major domo, the character you see in Return of the Jedi. Oh, by, oh, by the way, do I get to choose a multiple choice randomly on one of these questions as well? Uh, or no, not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Okay. This time. Unless there's for a weird one, Django uh, Fett question. We gotta make it easy. We gotta make it uh, easier for you to possibly win on this, because then maybe we'll throw up Andrew or something like that. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. On this one, I think I would guess the Rancor. That's what I would say. Oh, he gets it. Oh, I knew wait. you'd get it. I why, knew you'd get it. Why would you guess the Rancor? Uh, because I remember something like that being mentioned uh, at some point, perhaps in the movies or. I, don't I, know think, if it was in the I think it Maybe comes from Tales else. of Jabba's Palace because I was like, yes. "Okay, that's a book I've always wanted to get." Yeah, but I didn't get it. I got the Adventures of Han Solo instead because uh, those are my two my two favorite are Han and Jabba. I don't think and, I have it, but like those, like the tales, like tales of yeah. bounty hunting and tales from Mos Eisley Cantina, like those were one of my favorites. Yep. Anyways, yeah, I have no idea if it would actually be Bib Fortuna, but I think I remember it being Rancor being a yeah. gift from, yeah. from somebody. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to your weakness, the prequels. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what ship did Bail or no wait, that's not that's not a prequel. That's a... what ship did <laughs> they both start the same way, it threw me off. What ship did Padme Amidala take to Mustafar? To what? Um Mustafar. Oh. Interesting. Um hmm. by the way, the uh Dollarama has uh, Hot Wheels die casts mm-hmm. of Star Wars ships. Nice. <laughs> I got a Millennium Falcon, and uh, not the ship that's in the answer, but I don't want to tell you what it is because it's very, very close to the answer. So anyway, clock's I'm gonna ticking. Go with like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with like Naboo cruiser or something like that, or Naboo plane. That's All what right. I'd say. Too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the multiple choice answers. You're not gonna, okay, yeah, you're not gonna, enough, you're yeah. not gonna. Well, I don't want you to answer, but so the the uh, multiple choice answers are Naboo star skiff. Naboo Cruiser, oh. Naboo Royal Starship, Ooh. or the Naboo Yacht. So it is not Cruiser. It is A, the Naboo Starship. But you were very close. That was very close. That's almost impossible. <laughs> <laughs> At least he knew it was Naboo. Yeah. Like, I think that was good that they kept yeah, that. that was... All right, should I ask another one? Yeah. Okay. Whom did Luke Skywalker see upon exiting Yoda's hut on Dagobah? Sorry, can you repeat that question? <clears throat> Whom did Luke Skywalker see upon exiting Yoda's hut on Dagobah? Uh, Obi Wan. Boom. Obi Wan <laughs> and Obi. Nice. nice. That was from a certain point of view. He saw him. All right, I will ask you <laughs> so one. What? So I'm moving up a little bit. Before it was one out of three. Now I'm two out of three at exactly. least. <laughs> well, mine was kind of impossible. We'll ask Andrew that one too because that was. Stupid. Okay, last question for you. This is an original trilogy favorite for you. Right. Okay. Who who led the Cantina Band? <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Who led the Cantina Band? Is that what you said? Don't act like you didn't hear me. Yes. Okay. And don't Google it. <laughs> no, no. I, I I'm not even. Uh, I'm in my car right now. Actually, oh, so. you shouldn't even be on the phone. It was you a random person working. just tried to get into my car. It was pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> Was he the leader I, I of the Cantina band? I had to stare at band? them, and then they had to apologize. So, okay, now, who leads the Cantina band? Is that what the question was? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, if you get this right, you're on, I'm calling your provider and having them cancel your service right now. No, no, no. I uh, I don't think I'm going to be getting this right. I know it's wrong, but I'm just going to go because I like the character. Salacious Crumb. No. <laughs> it's, <laughs> the, it's the Tonal Nodes, right? That's the name of the band. I thought they were right, the, yeah. Nodal yeah. Tones? I thought they were like the jizz munchers or something. <laughs> the jizz munchers? Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> no, because I think I've seen it as a toys when they have all of them. It's something in the tonal notes. Well, his name, if you must know, 
is Figrin Dan. Don. Yeah, yeah, Figrin yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's of so course. Weird. Why did I get that one? <laughs> you should have. You should have been Figrin. Ah. Oh, <laughs> you should have been Figrin. Do you want to ask him one more question for old time's sake? Uh, I sure. I have some two pretty, pretty hard ones. This one's kind of hard. So I might give you the names on this one. But this is why I chose it. To okay. which Ewok was C-3PO referring when he said, I'm afraid our furry companion has gone and done something rather rash. Oh, this is easy. You remember okay. the scene in Return of the Jedi? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay, I think so it's here... the one where... Uh... I think it's the one where one of them gets on the uh, the uh, uh, speeder. Correct, speeder correct, bike. correct, correct. Yeah. Um, mm. So the choices are A, Wicket, B, Paplu, C, Logre, and D, Chief Chirpa. I know the answer. Yeah. I'm going to... I'm down to one of two. You I'm going to go with C. Logre? Logre, yeah. Oh, can Rob, get, you're so we, close. It was Paplu. It's Paplu, dude. Me, isn't Paplu. It? Yeah. Chief Chirpa yeah. and Wicket were the giveaways because, yeah. like, Wicket obviously doesn't do it because he's everywhere. And Chief Chirpa yeah. has, like, a headdress, right? Yeah. Logre, I feel, has weared something. Oh, they all wear something, but... Eh. All right, that was pretty good. Two out of four? Yeah. Oh. Two out of four ain't bad. Yeah, we won't count the last one. It was five, but we'll go two out of four. four uh, I'm not good at math. That go. Hey, Rob, do you want to stick around for our next topic? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, I just want to hear your opinion on this one. As long as, long as nobody tries to get in my car again. <laughs> We're going to do a, the rule of two is back this rule week. Rule of two is back. So the rule of two is we take a, a rule of Star Wars uh, or, or something that we heard in Star Wars and we make it uh, canon. Yeah. Turn it into fact, and we're and it's like a what if, uh, sec- section of um, of Star Wars canon, and, mm-hmm. and if you go on our YouTube channel, you can check out the what if uh, Luke died on Hoth video, and that's pretty much what we're going to talk about now. Mm-hmm. Only we're going to cut it short of the actual comic that it's based on. So in in Star Wars Infinities, the comic series, uh, which was like a what if, yeah. uh, Star Wars, of the movies, Hans uh, Luke Skywalker dies at the hands of a Wampa. Right? You said he, he gets attacked Han. by a second yeah, one. A second one, and he dies, and Han doesn't make it to him in time. And his di- and but Obi Wan says you must go to to uh, Dagobah to train under Yoda. Luke's dying words to Han Solo are, "You have to go to Dagobah and train as a Jedi." And so Han sets out on this quest to Dagobah to train as a Jedi. Now, in on the YouTube video, you can hear all about the Dark Horse comic series. But today, we're going to stop it there, and we're going to say, "What if Han?" trained to be a jedi knight in star wars <laughs> it's ridiculous it's absurd it's what if brock what do you think <sighs> so dumb <laughs> <laughs> you know what if if i had that comic i'd be like oh this is cool i'd be yeah. in for it but like it's just like it doesn't make sense i like the fact that yeah go to dagobah and maybe they go on a jedi search but for han to train as a jedi well, did, uh, if you read the actual, if you watch the YouTube video, or read the comics, mm. when they get there, Yoda's like, no, no, no. Le- <laughs> Leia's who I'm training. Oh, she's, okay. So that's how she finds out that they're brother and sister nice. and stuff like that. But anyway, Rob, what do you think of Han Solo training to be a Jedi, a Jedi master? Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Brock on this. It seems a little, I mean, he says the quote in the original trilogy too, hokey, yeah, hokey religion, yeah. right? Like he just, he doesn't believe in it whatsoever. I, and I even think it's a, it's a cool progression for the character from between return of the jedi and uh even um force awakens where he's at least m- more of a believer now mm-hmm. which is a little bit cooler and it was just it just it would be too much of a too much of a jump i think to expect him to become a jedi but it's a, it's a good twist or when he arrives there and yoda just says no 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 you're you're not becoming a jedi it's like he knows already <laughs> I, I, it might be a kind of like a fun fish out of water moment just for han finding out it's like holy crap how am i gonna become a jedi <laughs> and then he and then he arrives at, at dagobah and yoda tells me you're not becoming a jedi and he just wipe, wipes the sweat off of his uh his forehead as he finds out yeah yeah i, I think i think though I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear you guys down. No, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say, let's say Luke dies and Han goes to Dagobah and Yoda's like, okay, I'll train you. Because let's say uh, the force is around us, it binds us, it penetrates us, all that nonsense, hokey religious stuff. People can be converted. This has happened. So let's say Han goes there and he has to train with Yoda. It could be exciting in that he would resist it so much. But I think... It could never happen, but <laughs> I also think he could make one hell of a Jedi because he would be 
I think he would have a purple lightsaber like Mace Windu because he would be like crazy. Like he would kind of he would be in the middle of the balance of the force. He wouldn't be all good. He wouldn't be all bad because he's a scoundrel still. Yeah. That part of him wouldn't change. But deep down, though, he's actually a really, really good guy. Yeah. He's probably one of the best guys in the Star Wars universe when you think about it. Right. Like mm-hmm. where, where he is and where he stands with, with his friends and and stuff like that. So that's what I think. I think uh, the Infinity story, I ended up reading it for that YouTube video. <laughs> I, didn't right. know, I didn't know it was such a thing. I'm like, <laughs> wow. And I read the whole thing. And it's actually a lot of fun. It's ridiculous. For the most part, but Yoda, uh, but Yoda, Yoda dies at the hands of Vader, <laughs> what? and then Leia fights Vader, and then the Millennium Falcon comes back and shoots down Vader. It's dude, the thing's wow. crazy. The thing is crazy. <laughs> Wedge dies, Lando dies, Boba Fett gets frozen in carbonite, and Lando and Rob, you love this part, and uh, <laughs> and Lando uses him as a desk. <laughs> it's, wow. it's really it's cool to see that before canon was a giant thing and you can have fun with yeah. the characters it's fun to see stuff like that mm-hmm. that's what i think interesting so you guys would never want to see han solo as a jedi oh no okay here, here's a question then uh fatty fan theories has a theory that he's working on yeah i don't want to spoil anything because i don't know if, i don't know if he's going to finish or not but he mm. called me today he wants to talk to you on the phone about it brock <laughs> pass <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the thing he he has this theory uh not to go too much into it that because uh, in Shattered Empire, you see the forest tree, mm-hmm. and people. Oh, my phone! Beep. And and you find out that people, um, uh, the forest tree was given to Poe Dameron's parents. Yes. By Luke. Mm-hmm. So now there's the theory of Poe Dameron's force sensitive. Blah 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 blah. blah. We're all force sensitive. The theory. The theory is, uh, his theory goes now uh, that uh, Poe and Ray are brother and sister. Hmm. Okay, so let's scratch that. But let's say... No, this is actually a theory, though, for real. But let us say, it, could Poe Dameron be trained as a Jedi? Rock? Uh, I don't know. We don't know enough about the character. Like, there's... Obviously, I'm reading the comic, and there's a lot of cool stuff happening in that. And then I read Shattered Empire as well and thought that was really neat. But, like... I feel like maybe the force, the closest thing to the force that is involved with with Poe is like his mother and father, or was mostly his mother, found the force trees and they were going to look after it or whatever. I, I don't think it's necessary. Like, I, I feel like it's like, oh, it's an X-Wing. He's a pilot. Therefore, he has to have the force. So he becomes super awesome. Like, especially since he's proclaimed as the best pilot in the galaxy. Don't give him the force. Just make him an awesome pilot. Like the I, end. I actually completely agree with that. I'm, I'm. I don't even want Finn to be force sensitive. I don't think he is, and I don't think he should be. Rob. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's it's an open possibility for Poe. Because like uh, Brock said, we don't know that much about the character yet. Yeah. So I mean, uh, he hasn't even really shown an opinion as to the force mm-hmm. altogether. So I think he's a little bit more possible than Han. But um, yeah, maybe for the for the sake of the story, it might be best if uh, he just wasn't force sensitive, and we just we we got to go on the on the on the um, the train of the force with uh, Ray and right. Luke and Leia, right? Yeah. And then I mean, leave it to those guys. I mean, suppose like maybe not in episode eight, maybe in episode nine we start, or episode ten if that actually ever ever happens. If there is a point where the Jedi's can start to rebuild. That's the best part of that movie is like, oh, let's go meet new Jedis. And if they're evil or whatever, like, I want to know more about Luke's failed academy or, or Jedi temple. Like, when he's training Ben Solo, like, what happened? How many Jedi were there? Because people got killed after the Knights of Ren. Do you think that that'll be explored in a, a book? Or do you think they'll go ahead and make the third spinoff movie or the fifth or sixth spinoff movie that? I guess, yeah, that's an interesting... I mean, if you could recast Han Solo, you can recast Luke Skywalker. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> that's Because I think that is a very interesting mm-hmm. time period to explore. And everybody wants to see that. And I think it, and the question that nobody seems to ever bring up, because it's always, who is Snoke? Who is Ray's parents? Is mm-hmm. Why is Luke on the Jedi Temple? Yeah, what is why he is looking he on for? Octo? Yeah. yeah, why did he go there? Mm-hmm. That's what I want to find out more than anything. I Can mean, we go to that island in Ireland? <laughs> it's near impossible. <laughs> but yes, you can, but there's there are not puffins actually... there. <laughs> I love puffins. I love puffins. They're in the, uh, is it the Swan Princess? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> that was a good one. They're just an animal. <laughs> I've always equated uh, Ray to Luke, 
Finn to Han and Poe to Leia, but I think yeah. I think um, I think Poe is actually what what Han would have been had Han grew up in the rebellion. Yeah, I think that's the kind of guy that Han would have been. Even though I think in, for story purposes he serves more like a Leia, but I think mm. characteristic he's more of if Han was not a scoundrel if he was like a genuine if yeah. he was raised this way this is who he would have turned out to be and yeah. I think that's what he is yeah I agree especially reading the Poe Dameron comic I feel like that's exactly where they're trying to go oh that's cool I haven't read that yet yeah I should alright Rob are you looking forward to Rogue One oh I am I can't wait buying our tickets I mean uh, I'm seeing Doctor Strange tomorrow so it'll be cool seeing that last trailer in the theater I'll nice. probably go crazy again is Doctor yeah. Strange out already? <laughs> comes out on Friday Oh. Oh, are you yeah. going to the Thursday show then? Yeah, I'm oh, going okay. to the Thursday show. Yeah. Are you going? I am yeah, it, but I want it, like I want to see it, but I haven't let's, like let's go see it. Locked it down. Not tomorrow, but another time. Friday. <laughs> I, I work. Friday. I'll work. Saturday. Uh, okay, Rob. Thank you very much. We'll be buying our tickets shortly for Rogue One. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. See ya. All right. Good luck Bye, on the trivia contest. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hang it up. That was Rob McDonald. Rob McDonald. From the Rebel Scum Podcast. From Rebel Scum Podcast and our Facebook pages. I just he's friends with us. I just love that that I bring up the Han Solo's a Jedi. It's like, nope, stupid. I hope you have a huge phone bill because of that conversation. No, it's all local. But it would be awesome <laughs> if you're like, why did I spend $20 on a phone call? Well, we're probably making another phone call soon. Oh, sweet. But now that that's out of the way, let's go over to Coruscant for the news. Do, 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 do. This is Hollow News, straight from Coruscant. Ooh, can I bring up a news story that's not on our news list? Go for it. Battlefront 2 coming out early fall 2017. Wow. Or, or fall 2017. I might have made up the early part because I'm excited. And this one's going to have a story mode, or is well, that not confirmed? Well, everything's rumored right now. Eh. I assume they're going to have a story mode. For me, see, I don't care, because I like playing video games for 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. So when I go on Battlefront, I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm done. And then I can walk away. Uh, side Akbar, but also true fact, uh, James's wife is way better at, at video games than he is. <laughs> not all video games. I can kick her butt at Mario. Mario. Actually, she's better at uh, finding coins and stuff than I am. I'm like the guy that starts, and I'm like, save the princess, save the princess, save the princess. <laughs> and I save the princess. Nice. And, but she's like, I gotta get this hidden gem and this hidden And I'm like, I don't care about that. Yeah. Even in Battlefront, they have like the diamonds you have to find. Yeah, yeah. She made it a point. We're playing together. She made it a point to get yeah, every yeah. single diamond. Yeah, yeah. And if I didn't get one, she'd yell at me when I was in the area. <laughs> Why did you not get that diamond? I didn't even know there was one. I'm trying to kill the ATS team. I gotta get on uh, getting the season pass for that game. Battlefield. Or Battlefield, just, Battlefront. Just, just buy the uh, thing that's coming in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, actually. Because yeah. if you just buy that, you get... Yeah. Uh, you get it, and the Rogue One Scarif is going to be coming out probably a day or two after that comes nice. out. So I am so excited to find out Scarif. I think I've just been burnt too many times by shooting games. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't have that problem because I don't play a lot of them. Yeah, so. and this is Star Wars, and I love just being in the Star Wars world and the music. Yeah, and, exactly. It's the music and everything gets me. And and like I said, because I can only play for five minutes, I, I can only you know I'm like oh I got to go to work in half an hour. I'll put this on for yeah, ten yeah, minutes yeah, so yeah. I can play it. And that part it, it enjoys me, which I was surprised at because I hate a lot of online stuff. But anyway, let's get on to the real news. The real news. So, uh, Han Solo the movie. Um, I, th- I, can't, I briefly mentioned this uh, earlier in the podcast, but uh, uh, the gentleman, I guess I should open the thing, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> Eldon, uh, Hal- Eldon Ehrenreich? Ehrenreich and De- uh, D- D- <laughs> Donald Glover are super psyched to be in this movie. They're just talking about how they auditioned quite a bit, like, uh, and just sort of their viewpoints on it, because like, apparently Eldon did his first uh, audition on the Millennium Falcon. How sweet would that <laughs> That's be? That's so rad. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I always want to be Han Solo, so to be sitting in the cockpit doing it, and as I mentioned before, he like auditioned like seven times. Like, I think he went to England a bunch of times. Is that is that typical of actors, or is that uh, pretty? I think that's I think that's a Lucasfilm problem. Right, right, right. I'll bet you they were doing uh, Force Awakens in England, and they were like, "Hey, we gotta do auditions." Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. Because Kathleen Kennedy and all the hot shots, big shots were there, mm-hmm. they probably had to fly the guys in. But that they got a bill on Disney for the audition process for this movie alone. Oh my god, <laughs> that's. And it's, thank goodness Force Awakens made $2 billion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, Donald Glover was on Ellen, and he was just talking about how, like, he was super psyched about this movie because, like, his first... He, he's he been a Star Wars fan for a long time, and apparently 
as a Christmas gift way back when he was a kid, his dad gave him action figures, and one was Darth Vader, but the other one was Lando, right? Because, you know, he's, like, the only black character in the series, so you gotta, you know, you gotta kind of, especially back then, because, well, he's our age, right? He's so, 33, I think. Hmm? 33, yeah. Yeah, so, like, he's, he grew up in a time where it's like, yeah, it's okay to be different colors or different creeds or, di- like, but it's still, you know, pushing, like, we still lived in a world where, like, well, there's a lot of white people in this, like, so it's cool that he gets he he had that significance of Lando, and now uh, he gets to be Lando. You know what's funny? I never even realized until I think I was in college that Lando was the only black guy in Star Wars. Yeah, because we don't think about that. I didn't think of it at all. <laughs> and you know, when I was a kid, I have two Lando bounty hunter figures from this from Return of the Jedi, like two identical ones. Never crossed my mind. <laughs> I mean, it's like these are characters to me. You know, it doesn't. I never think of that stuff. The other thing: Have you seen that yearbook picture of Donald Glover? Where he's wearing a Star Wars shirt. No, but it, they mentioned it in the article. It's like, yeah. what is he talking about? But yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's a guy cool. like that, of course he likes Star Wars. Yeah. It's, he's, a, it's, he's a really cool guy to follow on social media or just in, interviews. Because he's not your typical actor. He's, he's, he could constantly surprises you on what he's interested in. So, uh, And then in uh, Daisy Ridley news, she has commented on Ray being a Mary Sue. I hate that. I hate it so much because it's so dumb. <laughs> For those those of you that don't know what a Mary Sue, it's a trope where it's a female character. And that doesn't specifically have to be a female character, but because it's Mary Sue, we assume it's a female character. An ideal character that just tends to have everything that's necessary to progress the story or succeed in the story or just sometimes is just handed things. So you're like, oh, they're just a fe- They're almost like a plot device rather than a character. Yeah. And, you know... People say that Ray is a Mary Sue, which is dumb because, come on guys, it's, <laughs> Ray is Luke. It's or Anakin. an orphan, pretty much, or Anakin, exactly. Growing up on a desert planet, learning to survive, can fly anything, and has the force. I would argue that Anakin's more of a Mary Sue than Ray. Yeah. So Daisy Ridley, <laughs> Daisy Ridley said, that's just sexist because it's a Mary Sue. Like, that, you get, it isn't female focused but because it's a female name I, what I, are you going to think I will say that when she uses the mind Jedi mind trick on the stormtrooper mm-hmm. that is out of nowhere so I think in, I True. think we need to get context on that and that's where I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt yeah. I feel like eventually we're going to learn that she was trained at a young age like she's somebody Yeah, she is somebody somewhere that has, has these abilities and they get unlocked when she's with I think they get unlocked when Kylo Ren goes into her mind yeah Personally, that's what I think. I don't buy that the that she awoke the force awoken when she was flying the Falcon. Yeah, <clears throat> but you know. Anyway. But she's a like the cool thing about her character that even though it's a a lot of people in that movie, there is character development and depth with her because it's like she's the girl. So oh, you know they make a comment on it with Finn where it's like I gotta save you. He's like, why are you holding my hand? We can run. Like it's like who's gonna fly it? I'm gonna fly it. Yeah. Like like absurd and. I, I think Star Wars, for all intents and purposes, has always been pro yeah. gender of what, like, you know, anybody can do whatever you, they want. Leia was a princess, but she wasn't a princess. Yeah, princess. she was the princess. You see her, like, I'm here to save you. It's like, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? And she grabs yeah. a blaster and is like, go, go, go. Let's jump into a she's, trash compactor. She kind of saves Luke a lot. And she's, when she's a, the rebel, when she's a slave Leia in Return of the Jedi, she strangles a gigantic space slug. Like, yeah. That's awesome. I love when people are like, uh, Disney said no more slave yeah. Leia stuff. And, and, and Carrie Fisher's like, why? She, yeah. They forced her to wear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, it's not like she was like, I'm going to dress like this. They forced her to wear it. Exactly. And then she killed the thing, the creature that made her wear it. It, the whole, this world is frustrating me. <laughs> I am so uh, And, uh, the website Making Star Wars is back at it again with some cool tips or cool hints about uh, uh, episode eight showing what Luke is wearing. Apparently, these uh, gentlemen or I think there's I actually I think it's guys and girls on it were on set for a scene on Octo between Luke and Ray as they're training, assuming we're assuming they're training. I don't think they were close enough. They were just there, so they were able to see what they were wearing. And uh, apparently, Luke is wearing sort of a shabby cloak. It's gray. 
similar to what we saw in Force Awakens, but it's dirtier sort of thing. He doesn't have a lightsaber. He doesn't have a belt where he could put his lightsaber, and you can see his hand. Side Akbar. Yeah. I was, when I was reading the story, I was looking up some other things. Mm. Uh, because, you know, trying to um, trying to get the stories and stuff for yeah. here and yeah. for other things. And the Force flashback that Ray, yeah. that Ray goes on, uh, if you look closely, I don't know who pointed this out, so I can't give them credit, but somebody pointed out, that Kylo Ren has his lightsaber in one hand, and he has another one in his left hand, mm. and it, they think that it's Luke's lightsaber. Interesting. So now there's a theory that Luke does not have a lightsaber in this movie. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So it's it's cool. I, it, it doesn't take anything away, but like they had one of their friends, I think his name is Lumberna- Lumberjack Nick, <laughs> draw a picture of what they saw. <laughs> and it's Nick. That's what he's named. Which I feel like I get what they're doing, but I feel it takes away from the story because you look at this picture and it's just like that looks like Adventure Time. Which is nothing wrong with Adventure Time, but you're just like, what is going well, on? Well, Adventure Adventure Time doesn't look like a Lucasfilm. No, exactly. So I mean, that's cool, but like it's I don't know. They're trying to say, oh, he doesn't have this, and we have no idea what he's doing. Like he's holding a stick instead of a lightsaber or whatever. You know, like, if he doesn't have a lightsaber, maybe he goes there to find a lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. I, or maybe there's a crystal there and he needs to find a crystal. This made me think of uh, this Instagram person I follow, uh, Venomous. And I think I sent it to you where it's a picture of Luke. He's wearing all black and he's above him is like 20 lightsabers that he's, yeah. you would assume is like controlling through the force. And I'm like, that would be epic. Like if that were the thing to happen where he's using the force and he fights off like the Knights of Ren or something like that. Oh my God. That would be crazy. I mean, I, I would think it'd be something that would take all of his power. So like, if he were to win said battle, he would be like done. He'd be like pass out a meal after. But yeah, like, uh, this is uh, this artist. He does a lot of, uh, Star Wars. His, his, his Instagram is venomous and he has his own Sith Lord, uh, um, Darth Venomous, which is like one of the <laughs> Cantina band members. It's awesome. He's got to like, oh, it's so good. You got to follow him. Uh, so if you learned anything from this story, follow Venomous on Instagram. He's awesome. I believe he's That's from Australia. Uh, you know what I was just thinking? Side Akbar, one more time. This yeah. is our third Side Akbar. Oh, shoot. Uh, I was just thinking this because I know you hate the idea of Ray being Luke's daughter. Mm-hmm. But here's what I'm thinking. Do you know, have you ever heard of the Harry Potter books? Yeah, I have. Okay. <laughs> They're about a little, uh, they're about a, a mother and daughter, a mother, da- mother and father, about two, a woman and a husband and wife <laughs> that get killed by this evil Voldemort guy. Yeah. And then Voldemort goes to kill the little kid, Harry Potter, and then yeah. he, goes, he scars him instead, and then something happens, he goes yeah. away. And then Harry Potter, uh, the, the old people are like, oh my God, Harry Potter is so famous, but he can't be in the wizard world. We need to send him to his parents, to his aunt and uncle who hate him. Right. So that's, what, what if... That's Ray's situation. Where, where? Well, wait. Okay, I get what you're saying. So you're saying Luke murdered her parents? No, uh, well, that could happen. No, no. I'm thinking more. No, I'm gonna go. I, I would that be cool? But I'm gonna go with her being Luke's daughter. Just, just hear me out on this one. I know you. Right, 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 right. But let's say Luke has a daughter and he has this school. Yep. And he's training. And then Kylo Ren turns, and Kylo Ren just starts going on a rampage. We have to kill everybody with the Force. Yeah. His child has the Force. So Luke and Kylo Ren battle, 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 battle. Snoke, he like deforms Snoke to bits. Yeah. He takes on Kylo Ren, and then Luke gets horribly injured, and he tells somebody, Han? Yeah. Somebody, take her away as far as you can. So they take her away. The last words that Ray hears are, we'll come back for you, sweetheart. Sounds, kind of sounds like a Han Solo thing to say. I'm not thinking of Han Solo, but anyway. But just if you if you look at it from that perspective, it yeah. does kind of line up. No, I know what. Thinking about it now, I would accept that premise if somehow Luke can erase people's minds with the Force. I think she has to have her mind erased. Because no, I'm not talking about Rey. I'm talking about Han and Leia. Because if you had if you if you had a daughter, wouldn't you tell your family? Then what if he get if uh, Larsen Tekka takes her? Mm. But I feel like I feel like she would have to be born and then danger happens for him to send her away. Yeah, she would be born. She'd be a little so, girl. Like I feel like that like if she's born and there's no danger, why wouldn't he tell everyone that he's had a daughter? You know what that's what I'm saying. So he would have to go and erase everyone's minds. And that could yeah. be very easily like he could just be 
Maybe he's protecting her because it's like she's the first newborn Jedi or whatever. Also, though, when he's away, uh, it doesn't seem like Leia or anybody has much connection to him. Like he's kind of like separate himself from everybody. And that's what I mean. Like that's he's done this, and to keep that Sherrod, he has to like go away. So after all this happens, he leaves, but he he wipes their memories. That actually happens in Harry Potter in the last book, or yeah, the last book. Hermione wipes uh, yes, yeah, her, her parents', parents minds. Which was actually the most depressing part of that whole thing. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. whole thing. But anyway, but anyway that's just a, a way yeah. that I thought that uh, that whether you want to believe Luke, she's Luke's daughter. Yeah, now, exactly. But that's a plausible way for them to do it where you're like, I understand now. And if you think about it, Unkar Plutt is basically yeah. Harry Potter's uncle. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. It all makes perfect sense. Anyway, what's our last news story? Uh, I think that was pretty much it. Because we already talked about Rogue One being too dark, and we're not—we don't know what we're gonna get. But uh, one last thing—it's not really a news thing—but we found this really cool fan film. Uh, oh God, what was it called? Oh, it wasn't even in English. It was. Uh, no, it wasn't in English. The title, like, the title shoot. is something. Well, alien. that looks like it's—it's—it's it's, it's like Star Wars writing. Yeah, yeah like Alien. Uh, it it's called? uh, have it here. Hold on, hold on. It's awesome. It's on our Facebook, so obviously you guys should be on our Facebook because then you would have gotten it right away. If you go Hoshiro, to facebook.com slash group slash rebel scum podcast. Hoshino. I was wrong. Hoshino dash Star Wars fan film. It's on YouTube. It is awesome. It's about a blind uh, Jedi Knight who's blinded. It's just sort of the story of like how she was blinded. But it's so cool. Like the effects in it are awesome. Like I wish we knew how to do that because we could go make Star Wars movies. I know. Because that's all you, that's what you need for the, like the Darth Maul one was very, very good, but the effects were better in this yeah. one that I'm like, oh. <laughs> this one I just saw people posting. I was like, what's this all about? And then it's I watched so it. I was like, oh good. my God, Brock, watch this. I want more. Like, it's yeah. amazing. It's it like, Well, maybe we'll figure it out and we'll do stuff on our YouTube channel. Oh, man. She's blinded. So it's, it's very similar to like uh, Kanan's situation yeah. on the Rebels. So, oh, so great. And like, she assembles a lightsaber in front of her and it's like, it's like half conventional shooting and that are effects and then it's half like cg yeah. i'm like oh I'm so do you great. think we'll see a light, uh, lightsaber constructed in film so i hope so they they have to do it like we kind of got a tease on the deleted scene of return of the jedi yeah i think that we're gonna see a legit one happening though i think we're gonna see it yeah i think they especially with ray like there has they, like they've done it they you've never seen it in film there's so. been a lot of emphasis on kyber crystals lately yeah 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 and i like I think that's where they're gonna go with it. All right. Personally. Well, call? that's news. Well, that's news. Let's, do, call, do, 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 let's do, call Andrew Fantasia. Okay. Because uh, he thinks he knows more Star Wars than Rob. And uh, let's see if he can if he can prove it at all. I think this trivia contest is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. When we lock it all down. Yeah. It will be locked down though. Like I said, we got a hundred views, <laughs> which is weird for that one. Um. Do, 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 do. See, it's just questions. it's just Rob hitting. Refresh every time. Now. <laughs> hey, hey, Andrew. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you today? I'm pretty good, thank you. You're live. Well, semi live. You're semi live on Rebel Scum Podcast, your favorite podcast. I love being live with things. Nice. But is this your favorite podcast? I think so. Probably. I don't, <laughs> I don't like those odds. I look, look, you, uh, Rob challenged you to a vote of no confidence. Uh, we're slowly working our way towards the trivia contest, but we want to ask you more trivia questions. Are you down? Yes, I am. Ooh, those, you sound very arrogant. Now, because you <laughs> dominated last round, we unfortunately have to handicap you. Yes. Does that make sense? We're not going to let you re- hear any of the multi multiple choice. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Rob did two out of five? Two out of five. Well, yeah, two out of four, but two we, out of four. we asked them five. We get two out of five, yeah. Okay. Uh, two out of four. So that's what you got to be. Uh, two out of four. All right. But you, last time was, pff, I, 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 don't, I don't have any, nothing against Rob, but I, I, I have complete faith in you. Well, not after, <laughs> not after you hear my first question. Are you ready? Uh, unless these questions are about meters, like the trivia game we played. Yeah. yeah. I asked him a few questions a couple of weeks ago, and it was all, how tall is... And that's, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. No, videos. nothing like that. No, I got another... I got one for you in here, though. And you better not be online. I told Rob I will call your service provider and have your phone discontinued. Uh, who no, I, I am staring at the floor right now. That's... <laughs> okay. What movie did you go see? Oh, I um, I had to cancel. I was going to go see um, 
the accountant with Ben Affleck, but uh, I'm probably going to go do that tomorrow instead. Okay. Let me know how it is. All I right. will. Who played the clumsy and stupid Admiral Ozell? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't know his name, but he's the guy who played Hitler in The Last Crusade. Is it? Uh, I hate this yeah, I, I don't know his name, though. Uh, I kind of want to give you half a point for that. <laughs> <laughs> How about, okay, no, I'm not going to give you multiple what, what? So what's the answer? <laughs> Michael Sheard. Okay. Michael hmm. Sheard. Brock's going to look this up. I'll ask you a second question. How do you Brock's, spell Sheard? Uh, S-H-E-A-R-D. Uh, I asked this one to Rob. I'll ask you. What ship did Padme Amidala take to Mustafar? Oh, um, oh God, what was it called? It's a Naboo something. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> uh, I want to say Naboo Cruiser. That's exactly what Rob said. You're wrong. <laughs> You're oh. dead wrong, sir. <laughs> dead wrong. It's a Naboo Star Skiff. Star Skiff. Star Skiff. You guys are close with your... Uh... He got it right! I know. That's why I want to give him half a point. Oh, my God. So he, you've got point five out of two. Why? Is, what? What? Which one is this from? Empire Strikes Back? Who is this admiral? Like, is he the one? Like, I don't, I'm confused on who he is. Uh, yeah, he's he's an empire. He's the guy who um, uh, I think he's the first guy that Vader chokes in that movie. Right, and then uh, Admiral Piet takes over. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. I right, brought him two okay. questions. Two questions. Okay, um, this one you probably will get, but I think it's a pretty good one. What is unique about the Sarlax tongue? <laughs> oh, it has a beak. Damn it! You got <laughs> ah, that's a good one. I like that because you think that's his face, but it's really not his face. It's yeah. His tongue. Nice. All right. Second one. Whom did Timothy M. Rose portray? Admiral James Cornelius Akbar. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. You... So so you you are at two point five out of four. Oh okay. Wait. Oh, yeah, he got both I got, wrong. I right? got, well, no, but I gave him 0. 0.5 for knowing who the guy was, just not right, 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 right. So I want to ask you this question that I asked Rob. All right. And then, Brock, you can finish it off. Who led the Cantina Band? <laughs> You'll know. Oh, uh, that would be uh, Figurin' Dan. <laughs> I'm out of here. And it's the nodal tones, right? The nodal tones? Modal the modal nodes. nodes. Modal nodes, damn it. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, this one last this one. You'll probably Featuring get Kanye. <laughs> Life of Pablo. <laughs> Life of nodal, uh, modal tones. Which species planned to eat Luke Skywalker? Which species planned to eat Luke Skywalker? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, when you say species, I'm going to have to go with Ewoks, but they're not the first or last to try to eat him. <laughs> See, that is a, that's a trick question, though, because you could say Wampa. You could say, who else tried to eat him? The Sarlacc. There's a lot that tried to eat Luke the Skywalker. The thing in the garbage chute. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've tried to eat Luke Skywalker at least once. This is a family (laughs) show, sir. Fun fact I read on Instagram, Ewok jerky is a very prominent uh, delicacy in the galaxy. Is that in Life Day? Oh, no. Yeah. So, Andrew, uh, I want to ask you one question. Uh, Actually, you know what? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stick around for our next topic? Uh, Sure, okay. It's Never Tell Me The Odds. Never Tell Me The Odds, The Odds, Odds, Odds. That's not right. What the odds? Oh, no. Even. Ah, oh, damn it. We, we, have, we have songs that Brock writes. Yeah. Weekly. On the spot. <laughs> Brock, do you want to run down the odds? Ah, <sighs> yes. These are good ones, actually. Like. Don't look at my top five star, uh, X-Wing pilots. That's our top five this week. I feel like if there's an odd that we don't like, like what the question is, we should stand up and yell never tell me the odds <laughs> okay uh first odds andrew what are the odds of r2d2 being in rogue one um i'm gonna say 90 percent hmm, wow interesting That's what do you high. think james uh, well why do you think 90 though yeah why 90 uh, cause I feel like we might get like a little cameo with him in three PO at the end. Yeah. Um, nothing yeah. big. I don't think they'll even say anything, mm-hmm. but I feel like they'll throw them in there. Yeah. Like they walk by at one point. Yeah. I want to say 60. I mean, I want to say 90. I want to say a hundred, 
But I kind of feel like because they want to separate this and we're going to get yeah. Vader and Bail Organa and possibly Alea. But also, like, so I feel like they'll be like, let's stay away from R2, who is the face. But again, R2 is the face. And I, and I want, and he has, he gets the plans from Leia. Yeah. And if we're going to see the Tantive oh, 4. Oh, yeah. If yeah. we're going to see the Tantive 4, we're going to see Yeah, R2. no, I agree. So I'm going to go right. 65% on that one. Like, that would be a great post credit scene. Yeah. But we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm gonna go seventy five because I, I if you're gonna put I think it's just a nice little Easter egg. Yeah. All right. What are the odds of Jedha, which is the new planet we're gonna visit in Rogue One, being the Star Killer base? This was a theory on Slash oh. Film. This was a theory wow. on Slash Film. I'm gonna go zero percent. Uh, I, I think I heard uh, Star Killer Base. The real name is Levin or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just don't like it, Jedi is this holy land. How does it get cold? Are we gonna find out in Rogue One? Yeah, yeah. There's too much going on. I just don't think that's it. Well, what do you think, Andrew? Yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to agree. I think I'm gonna have to go zero percent because if I remember right, Star Killer Base was supposed to be way out, like in the middle of nowhere in the galaxy, and then like they started, like building on it because it was so remote and yeah. i don't think jedha is that far removed yeah well you have the planet book right the what's it called the star wars planets i have the the locations book yeah yeah are, is, yeah. are, are either of them in there uh jedha not in there but yeah. uh star killer is and like they just show it like on the map and it's yeah. like way tucked away like in the dark corner of space yeah it's i'm gonna go zero percent too because it's like jedha is more of a desert like arid planet and then the you know star killer base is like a forest evergreen yeah snowscape like yeah like there's yeah. no there's no pine trees on like jedha <laughs> it looks like thunder bay <laughs> <laughs> that's actually true yeah that's true what's All our right. final odd our final odd is what are the odds of a rogue one post credit scene with r2 tito no not with r2 tito <laughs> but what are the odds of a post credit scene in star wars uh star wars story starring rogue one I'm going to go full Brock and go 50-50 because I know it's not going to happen, but I want it to happen for sure. Andrew? I, I'm going to say 15%. Ooh. So there's a chance. I think we're actually we say, more likely we call, to see one and Han Solo. Can we call that a partial Fantasia? If he says yes, we can. <laughs> see, I, I think if they... This movie's going to set a lot of precedents for yeah. their films. So if they don't do a crawl, we're never going to see a crawl in, in one of these movies. If, if we yeah. see a post credit scene, we're going to keep seeing it. I can't see them not having a post credit scene in this and then having one in Han Solo. Yeah. I, the only thing is, is it going to be a post credit scene or is it going to be... I don't think they're going to do a teaser for episode 8 because I don't think they want people leaving the theater going, I can't wait for episode 8. They want people to leave the theater and go back to Rogue One. So I think... Right. I'm gonna go full Brock. I'm gonna go fifty fifty. Oh, I really, I really do want one, but if it, de- I don't like. If they said no before for uh, Force Awakens, so that's what I think. Fifty percent. Should we? We good with our odds? Our odds. That's odds? it. We're that's all the it. odds. Uh, let's go. Oh, on. I've got a bonus odd for you. Oh, okay. 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 Special bonus odd. Okay. <laughs> Sounded like you were going so somewhere else with bonus? that. your <laughs> bonus. <laughs> so here's uh, what are the odds? that we will see even if it's just as a cameo in a cantina somewhere what are the odds that in a future movie we will see Tamara Morrison playing either a clone or Boba Fett ooh <sighs> you know what I, I want to say I, for me personally 100% how old is he now for, is, is he in his 20s now he must be I think we're going to see a Boba Fett somewhere down the line. I don't think he's, we're ever going to see his face again in Star Wars. I think Lucasfilm, Disney, they're done with the prequels on film. But they could put him in there just for funsies. But we get another actor to play him, though, to play Boba Fett. But, like, he's not Boba Fett. He's just in it. Like there I, is, I think we could like, see him as, like, like, if Boba Fett survived, like, he could just be, like, a cantina extra somewhere. Yeah. But, like, without the suit, like, we just see him with his face all messed up or something. He's just there, and somebody's going to be like, oh, my God, it's that the, was the, the guy. It's like and how, then, yeah. 
It's like how we yeah, always top, look for. Will be like, oh yeah, that's him. That's canon. See now. that that would be a post credit scene I'd be into if that teased up a Boba Fett movie. It's like when we watch one of those movies. It's like, where's Warwick Davis? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I don't. I think he's. Uh, I hope he's not. Like I really, you know, I love Django's my favorite. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I would love to see anything from that era come back. I still think Rogue One needs to start with Revenge of the Sith era technology in the movie. Oh, I thought we were talking about young Boba Fett. No, old Boba Fett. Oh. <laughs> you don't care. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Django. But he's also Boba. Because Boba's a clone of him. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the guy that played Django is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Django! So, all right, let's move on to books or comics. Andrew, I want to keep you on the line quickly <laughs> for this. Because okay. you, you did the review, it's on YouTube, of Ahsoka. Yes. We're really so I just going wanna... off script, James. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear you talk about Ahsoka for, for a little bit. This is kind of like a side act bar right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing um, Brock right off. <laughs> Ahsoka's book, I, I, I didn't love it. I'm not going to lie. It was uh, very bland. It was very uh, like safe. Like Nothing big happened that made mm. me feel like, oh, I'm glad I read this. Mm. Like she, uh, she gets her white lightsabers and that's about it. Like if you really want to know how Ahsoka gets her white lightsabers, this will tell you. But other than that, it was like, th- thankfully it's short. <laughs> it's like, like, I finish it in two days. Like is it's there, super short. Is there a lot of, uh, Rex in it? Isn't he in it a whole bunch or no? No, there's zero Rex. Oh, I thought he was, he got mentioned. Am I thinking? He got a like mention. Commander there's Rex? like, yeah, uh, from Rebels, yeah. Yeah, she has like like a couple of like flashback chapters every now oh, okay. and then. And I think yeah. he's mentioned in one of those, but oh, I don't okay. even think he has dialogue. Oh, I got the sense there was a bigger deal. Okay, interesting. I wish. Which that's I like that you mentioned that because that kind of works with what I read this week. I've read all the Vader, the Darth Vader comics that I borrowed from James. The first three oh. trades, and it's very good. Like it's good. But it's the same. It's like Poe Dameron where it's like, we have to think of a story, but we can't say anything that might affect the possible upcoming movies, right? So you don't right. really, nothing, there's no real development. It's just like, well. That was my problem with those comics. Was yeah, like, yeah. You know, this is why I don't understand why they don't go back further in time. Yeah, yeah. Or tell us something completely off the yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, your hands are tied. Like, it's so yeah. She Maybe she wanted to write more. Like, yeah. I know Chuck Wendig. When he did aftermath, he's like, I want to do more and more, but he, uh, but he couldn't because, oh, that's my phone. My wife's calling me right now. She wants to talk about Ewoks, uh, but uh, she's gonna keep calling. But um, can I hang that up or do I hang up on Andrew? Oh, she's okay. No, oh, you're so okay. So um, yeah, I just feel like he wants to tell a lot more, and then all of a sudden, and then they were like, well, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. So it's like if you're not gonna let them do anything, why are they doing it? Yeah. yeah but like the cool thing about the vader comic is like you can tell it was written by fans because they're like okay we can't do anything new with the thing maybe we can think up a character like dakota afra is a pretty fun character and like triple zero is a cool droid and uh uh the bounty the chewbacca or the chewbacca the wookie bounty hunter is the same one that's in obi-wan that the Obi Wan oh. things, the same, the black. That's curse right, yeah. And he's gonna be in Doctor Aphra's. Oh, sweet! Yeah. But like, those are awesome characters. I, I will pick up Doctor Aphra because of this. But you could tell they're written by fans because they're like, hey, look at this Calam- uh, Mon Calamari, and he's got like uh, Grievous's body, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just, exactly. just do random, random <laughs> stuff. They're like, look at this. like we did this and then that and then exploded, boom, boom. <laughs> like yes, <laughs> awesome. But yeah, that's what like. Poe Dameron's kind of the same where you're like, we can't do much more. Which I don't understand. Why do they want to go back a little bit further with Poe Dameron and tell yeah, some exactly. crazy stories? Like, you can tell a lot of stories. The problem is that because they know what's happening everywhere in the universe, yeah. they're like, well, you're not going to do that here. You can't do that there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, just let them do something. Who ca- Canon sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick Cannon. But it's, also, but it's also great. Like Nick Cannon's I, hilarious. I, I also... <laughs> I also only read these books because they connect. Yeah, know. exactly. But I wanna... You say that now, but wait till we get the Caravan of Courage canon. Oh! Uh, <laughs> I, I then the tides will turn. I should have hung up on you and let Aaron come on the phone because she loves Ewoks. <laughs> and we watched, actually, when we went to go see Force Awakens last year, we put on Caravan of Courage before we saw Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, I want to talk about Battlefront a little bit. The game, the book, the game. <laughs> Did you read that book, Andrew? No, the game left such a bad taste in my mouth that I didn't go anywhere near the book. But well, I heard it's great. Well, the book came out a few weeks before the game. So, yeah. Uh, Brock's holding up Ewoks DVD. 
Uh, that picture I use in a, in a Jar Jar Binks story on, on YouTube. <laughs> Kudos on that video, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was a great video. <laughs> I love that you put the words in and kind of make fun of uh, Andreas Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, Battlefront the book is a fantastic. It's actually uh, probably my third or fourth favorite of the new canon oh, Star Wars books. It is fantastic. This is what see. This is where Rogue One has a problem with me. Is if Rogue One is not as good as this book, that's gonna suck. <laughs> because yeah. Cause yeah. this book is. Uh, I'm looking at your DVD right there. Band of Brothers. It's like a band of brothers. Oh, sweet. Saving Private Ryan. It's this uh, Molly crew of of, Re- of rebel soldiers that go in, and one of them is a. Um, Oh, what's the species? What's Dax, Andrew? What's the oh species? yeah, the Gadorian, the Dolor, the, the yeah, Dax the, Diner, the with the forearms from and, uh, oh Dax, Attack he's a um, yeah. he's a basilisk. Yeah, basilisk. Yeah, exactly. Wow, my phone's on silent. Um, it's my wife texting me now. My wife. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so he's that. So there's one of those guys, but he's like a really tough guy, and he's like the muscle of the group. And that, in that book, it starts off, and, and everyone hears uh, on the comm, and this guy's up, uh, upstairs a few floors, and you hear like a lightsaber go, and heavy breathing, mm-hmm. and Vader rip, like just destroys this guy. And Vader's kind of a myth, and no one really knows much about him. Yeah. And there's a scene on Hoth. I won't go any further, but just read Bat- Battlefront the book, Twilight Company. Mm-hmm. It's probably my third favorite. I got Sweet. it. I got it last year. I can't remember why I got it. I think it was one of those things where I bought a Christmas gift on Amazon, and I needed a couple of dollars for the free shipping. <laughs> and I was like, well, instead of paying five dollars for shipping, I'll pay twenty dollars for this book and get free shipping. Ah. Uh-huh. And I did it. But it was. I absolutely loved the book. I was so. I was so surprised by it. It's on pay. It's in paperback now. If you want to buy it for, nice. for cheaper, uh, but I would. Battlefront the book definitely Sweet. recommend it cool. even if you didn't like the movie Andrew thank you for your time today you're very welcome thank you well you won't be thanking us when you lose to Rob in the oh. trivia contest oh that was a low blow I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can lose to Rob at this point I've, <laughs> I've heard you guys answer the same questions now and it's <laughs> scary we're gonna we're, it's all gonna be fair all gonna be uh, random uh, I told you guys a little bit of the rules I'll tell Brock some of the rules and uh, I look forward to it on YouTube hopefully by the end of this month oh beautiful alright have a good day sir you too gentlemen take care bye Andrew ciao bye bye <laughs> I hope he hears this back he's like you why would you do that <laughs> Uh, so I, I know he wasn't supposed to come on for the books, but I knew yeah, I just wanted to talk about Ahsoka because I know you want to read Ahsoka. I don't know if you still do or not. Well, if he'll let me borrow his copies, so I'll have to buy it. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I almost bought the Ahsoka book, and then something stopped me. <laughs> oh, won't. it's the same price on ebook and hard copy. Oh, okay. and I'm just like, nope, can't yeah. do. <laughs> okay, one's got to be cheaper than the other before I make a decision. Okay, let's uh, wrap up the show. With top, top five. five. Top five. Stand five. it by. <laughs> This top five was written especially for you. Uh, top five X-Wing pilots. Pew, 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 You know, pew, pew. I was sort of like, oh, I can't think of that many. But, you know, there has been a lot of pilots at this point. Yeah, they're actually quite hard. So you want me to start or you want to start? Uh, I'll start. Number five, Biggs Darklighter. I like him as a character because it kind of like, if you read the novelization of uh, Star Wars, A New Hope, he's... I think there's a point. Well, there was a deleted scene from Star Wars where you see meet him on Tatooine. Uh, but yeah, anyways, he's actually in the deleted scene of the movies as well. And he's in the book a little bit more. The yeah. guy, I don't think he goes to Tashi Station, but it's supposed to be like <laughs> that. Um, and he's got a sweet mustache. Yeah, so, I'm, gonna yeah. Go, I'm gonna go Biggs as well. Yeah, I have his action figure. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, Biggs is cool, and he knows Luke. He's got a cool helmet too. It's got like the checkerboard, I think, on the oh, front. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Do you wish he survived? Uh, yeah, but like Wedge is good too. Mm, he's not on my list. Mm. <laughs> Big mistake. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, he was actually number five. I changed to Bigs because I actually prefer Bigs. All right. Okay. Now number four. I'll do number four. We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. We'll keep going. Snap Wexley. Temin. Temin Wexley. Ooh, snap, snap is my number yeah. four. Uh, I've read the the aftermath books, two of the two oh, of the, yeah. that are out. He is in there, and now he is a big deal pilot, and you can play him in the Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens. He's also in Poe Dameron too. So. Is he? He shows up, Ooh. and I enjoy Snap more than Wedge, and so that's why Snap is my number four. Damn, I forgot about Snap. You have his pop. He's your I favorite know. pop or fourth. He's got favorite a sweet pop. helmet too. 
But I got to stay true to my numbers. Number four, Porkins. No, Jack, it's Porkins. Too, too high on your list. Porkins, 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 Porkins. Bam, 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 bam. He says, uh, Red Six standing by. <laughs> Hold up, Porkins. And he's a fat guy. Ha, 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 ha. That's it. Who's your number three? Number three is Wedge Antilles. Boom. Because he's in all the other movies, he's awesome. I would argue he's probably a better pilot than Luke Skywalker. No. Because he survives all the movies and he doesn't have the force to help you him. You don't know that. I do know that. And we found out now how he joined the Rebellion, sort of. Yeah. But See, Wedge is not on my list because uh, he's forget he's forgettable if you just watch the movies. People who, who don't... Who, yeah, don't obsess yeah. over it. Don't know his name. We're also doing top five X-wing fighters, so you might as well just be like <laughs> Luke, Paul. Hey, hey, watch <laughs> it. Uh, but also, the actor that plays him does not want to come back, and so that took him off of my oh, list. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, he's off my list. It's like you don't want to be involved. I don't want you involved. Uh, then I will say it's a joint effort, Snap and Wedge for number three <laughs> for me, because they're kind of the same. Like they're like they're there. Look, look, there's. You know when aftermath the book starts, yeah. it starts with Wedge getting captured. Oh yeah. And my first thought was, oh, they're gonna kill off Wedge. Like mm-hmm. that was my first yeah. feeling, because he doesn't want to come back. Yeah. Kill him off in the book. That does kind of suck, because he is still alive. <laughs> so like yeah. he could come back. And he's Ewan McGregor's uncle. That's right. And he that's told right. him not yeah, to yeah. do Star Wars. Oh my which god! Is funny. Uh, my number three is everyone's favorite fat guy in a suit, Porkins. Oh, I thought you said my thing was too high on the list. Too low. Too I low. I did say too high. I get it's whatever. Whatever. But look, the facts is Porkins <laughs> is awesome, and he dies. Yeah. And he shows up in Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's your number two. That's number three. That's number three. Yeah, oh, we okay. Have done three. Have you done three? Did you just do three? You just I just did three. three. Yeah. No, it's Porkins. Porkins number three. Okay, sweet. Same reasons you said. And then he dies and he blows up and you're like, well, that was sad. Yeah. He needed to shave. What's your, your number two? Number two. Are you ready for this one? Is it the same as my number two? Luke Skywalker. Oh, I see where you're going with number one. Ah, ha, ha. He, you know, it's he's got to be high up on the list, but my number one is my number one. You so, like that number one that much. Uh, I think I know where you're going. I, I have high faith in it. Uh, number Luke, he, he does more Jedi things than he flies around, quite honestly. So I feel like he needs to be a little bit more devoted to his X-wing. Uh, I would argue, I would argue wrong mm. because he flies that X-wing a lot. Mm, like half an hour in each movie, maybe twenty minutes. If that, <laughs> he he's in his snow speeder for about five minutes and he jumps out and takes out a. AT-AT AT with that, his Luke Skywalker. Because you have to. Yeah, because he's more Jedi than X-Wing pilot. Or pilot in But Jedi. he's one of the best pilots. He's not mm-hmm. such a bad pilot himself. Mm-hmm. My number, number two, two is Poe Dameron. Oh, that's interesting because that's my number one. Yeah, because he doesn't have the force <laughs> and he can't yeah, fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also the number one pilot in the galaxy. And Luke Skywalker is still alive when they make this thing. He doesn't fly anymore. He's retired. Uh, he has a metallic he's tired. I, can I make my point Spare for Poe? tire. I'm pointing at my stomach. <laughs> I, I like Poe. Po Poe's awesome. I'm hoping he, he grows as a character yeah. and we learn more. And we get to see him fly around. And I hope Finn flies around with him a lot, too. Yeah. I want to see that relationship. But I love me some Poe Dameron. He's awesome. I think uh, this list we should do again in a year because Rogue One, we might get a whole new slew of pilots. Well, my number one is Eloetsi. <laughs> Isn't that a child sir? No, that's Eloise. <laughs> that's a, he's the one that's like, yeah, it's not doing much damage. <laughs> and he gets blown up. Yeah, he gets blown up. He's no. all, that's one of the things I like about Poe Dameron because you see him, he's like a tech. He's not even a pilot yeah. at the point. Yeah, like, no, my number one's obviously Luke Skywalker yeah, yeah, yeah. because he's Luke Skywalker. He blows up the Death oh, Star. Dude, never, never. Uh, he doesn't need it. He doesn't uh, need the. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what? Yeah. He's a Jedi. Yeah, well... If Poe was a Jedi, he would have not have been captured. Poe Dameron, handsome. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, greasy looking. Is that my jacket? No, keep it. Looks good on you. Uh, bro, did we just become <laughs> bro, bro? <laughs> nice. Right. That was a good list. That oh, was fun. Your number one is Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron. Uh, yeah. Could you imagine if they would have kept him dead like the original script was? <laughs> And then, and then Oscar Isaac. It's almost like, why even bother giving him a name if that were to happen? Well, it's Star Wars. Everyone has a name. Yeah. Eloetsi. Eloetsi. <laughs> Weird. All right. That is our 14th episode. Wow, we're still here. I can't even... And my wife doesn't complain when I come here to do My this. wife. It's so weird. <laughs> you come here more in the last, like, two months than you have in the two years I've lived here. Well, invite me. Uh, I do. Uh, never mind. 
We got You're like, uh, I gotta go. I gotta go pedal boarding. Uh. Oh, jealous? Uh, it's too cold jelly. to paddle board now. Uh. <laughs> Christmas is coming. I gotta go to Hastings. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that's a weekend tradition. All right, that's our show. Thank you to Rob McDonald's. You can follow him on Twitter. At, I don't even know what it is. And Robert E. McDonald's. No thank you to Andrew Fantasia. And no thank you to Andrew Fantasia and <laughs> for ruining Ahsoka for everyone. Thanks. Uh, he's <laughs> at uh, Twitter at Andrew Fantasia. Ro- uh, Brock, where can everybody find you? You can find me at, at BF Smink. Forget about Facebook. It's old news. Just search at BF Smink because that is what I use all the time. But but join our Facebook page. Join our Facebook page so you can watch Hisano or whatever that thing was called. It was awesome. It's so good, you guys. 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 <laughs> guys. <laughs> guys and girls. Hisano. We should just play it right now. Ugh. Uh, you can Hoshino. Follow- Damn. Oh, sh- <laughs> Ooh. It's uh, cool. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Petsafina. Yeah. PS4 me at Petsafina. And, uh, yeah, you know, talking Star Wars. Talking Star Wars. I'll go to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast. It's actually, I think, if you type in Rebel Scum, it's the first thing that comes up on yep. YouTube now, which is pretty exciting. And uh, we have a bunch of videos there. Uh, Fatty Fan Theories has just put up a new one. We have some, mm-hmm. which are, was our rule of two today, about Han training as a Jedi. Yeah. And my love for Jar Jar Binks is on it. <laughs> so anyway, that's our yeah. show. And if you have any, if you want us to hit any topics, send us a message on SoundCloud or send us audio, like like a call in, and we will play it, and you will be on the show. And our SoundCloud name will be changing soon. Yes, it should. Hopefully, by the time this gets pu- published, our new channel, same channel, just different name, Digital Charcuterie. That's right. It's crazy, but you'll get it with it. So you'll get it. More things are coming. Having a lot of fun with this. Yep. Glad you're enjoying it. Keep on listening. Keep on commenting. Yep. And email us if you want at rebelscumbags at gmail.com. Rebelscumbags at gmail.com. That's our show. Thanks for listening. May the force be with you, James. Brock. Always. May the force be with you. <laughs> hey scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.